The problems in East St. Louis can seem overwhelming. In many cases, the keys to finding solutions come by understanding who is there and what they need to be safe and successful. You ready? Playing catch with his two sons. Good catch. Matt Hawkins is doing what so many of us try to do. All right. Spend time with our children and plant the seeds that will help them grow into good people who work hard to make ready? their communities a better place. It is our duty to manage our community and no one can take that away from us. And we should never turn our back on it because it is us. And when we accept our responsibility, a beautiful community is almost automatic. Matt, the president of a nonprofit watchdog group, and his wife, Kim, a recruiter for a major bank, are raising their boys in Parsons Place, one of the most successful developments in their hometown of East St. Louis. There were opportunities to go other places, but my heart was just to come back here and, and be part of my family. and you know, do my part. The Hawkins say that part is difficult in a depressed and unstable city where many people feel afraid to challenge authority, especially when they've been led to believe that some of the people in positions of power are their friends. We have to redefine what a friend means. For me, a friend is a person that understands that Matt Hawkins has been through a lot and he's not going to throw it away for some favor for somebody that's doing wrong. So what would make things better? Matt Hawkins believes there are too many taxing districts in the East St. Louis area that seem to be designed mainly to provide jobs for politicians and their supporters. If you eliminate what he calls wasteful spending at local townships and the election board, he believes it will reduce the impact of corruption and increase the amount of money available for services like code enforcement and public works. What is it like to try to fight for the truth in East St. Louis? Um, it's the hardest fight that you're gonna have. The challenges seem overwhelming. How many of your students have been shot and killed? 63. I was thinking about was death. I was gonna get shot. At the Emerson Park School and Job Training Program, students like Rico Perkins. Can you imagine your, before your 14th birthday, you're like, Lord, am I gonna live to see 14? Am I gonna live to see 15? And Elena Burries try to survive the violence that has devastated the city. My whole world just came tumbling down right on top of me when they told me they got shot. I want, and I just wanted to go and make sure that it wasn't really him. But I knew it was, and I couldn't do nothing about it. 63 since 1994. Wow. Yeah. Emerson Park's executive director, Vicki Forby, works with young adult students many of them committed to turning their lives around and giving back to the community, but often finding little opportunity to work in the city and help rebuild it. I think people have done what they had to do to survive, and I think people will do that in any part of this world. And at times, it's a seemingly impossible task. What was it like to look over your shoulder all the time? Devastated, scared. Carl Willis wants to work in construction and eventually own his own company. But he's still in a gang and not ready to leave it because of the loyalty and respect he believes he gets from being a part of it. I'm gonna leave it one day. I ain't saying now, but one day I am. When the time comes, I'll be ready. To leave the gang, Carl may have to take a severe beating or he could be killed. This was a beautiful community. This can be a beautiful community. Forby says the time has come to take drastic actions, like closing nightclubs and liquor stores at 10 p.m. and bringing in the National Guard to save a community that has been unable to save itself. I don't think there's anything wrong with having the National Guard come in. This country doesn't mind, it, mind invading another country to restore peace and, and deflect violence and restore government. So why are we afraid to do it here? There have been dramatic actions taken recently, including police raids on overnight clubs and Crown Food Marts. The state's attorney charged the Crowns with selling illegal synthetic drugs and other crimes. The nightclubs also face criminal charges. And a regional law enforcement commission has been created to provide oversight of the troubled East St. Louis area police departments and allow communities to use tax money, usually set aside for development, to help pay for law enforcement. The triple threats of poverty, 
violence and corruption have cast a shadow over these cities for a long, long time. But I believe in the people of East St. Louis. They are fighting not just for their part of the American dream, they are fighting for their lives. And they deserve the best from us as public servants. Taking back East St. Louis will take much more than late night marches through the John DeShields public housing complex, which prosecutors say has a higher murder rate than Juarez, Mexico, one of the most dangerous cities in Latin America. It really hurts. Evidence of systemic neglect is everywhere at the DeShields complex. The federal government failed to provide proper security, and the closed Lincoln High School is now a public disgrace, even a year after the state took control of the school district. They don't care about the community. They don't care about the people. Inside the school, more evidence of systemic failure, massive taxpayer waste, and mismanagement. Over the years, our investigations found that the elected school board often chose to spend millions of dollars on jobs for family, friends, and political cronies, instead of hiring more qualified teachers that live in their own community. Now it sits as the latest reminder that something once treasured is now trashed. Until you understand the tough work of building a community, you cannot really appreciate it. Um, and we want to appreciate our community. We want our community to appreciate us. The troubled East St. Louis School District, dominated for years by politics, remains one of the biggest obstacles to improving the community. As long as test scores and graduation rates are among the lowest in the state, Many experts say the community will continue to struggle and it will be much slower to rebuild. When we come back, the story of little Ike and other children who want more and are willing to work for it.